A good ham radio antenna will display three characteristics. It'll have a decent radiation pattern, it'll be efficient, and it will have a good signal to noise ratio. On the high bands, a single antenna will meet those requirements without too much problem. However, on the low bands, a single antenna has a much more difficult time meeting those requirements. To overcome the poor signal to noise ratio, many hams have installed low band receive only antennas. Let's go look at three Spokane DX Association members who have installed low band receive only antennas. Let's start with Gary K7GS. Gary lives in Spokane, near power lines and substations, so he has a lot of electrical noise. For low band receiving, I use this Hovenbrew uh, loop up here. Uh, the reason I like this antenna is, one, it doesn't take up much space in my little property here, and two, it has figure eight pattern with very deep nulls. I use it on 80 and 40 meters. We're listening on 160 meters, and we have an interfering signal we'd like to know, and uh, I'm going to do so by rotating the loop. This is the control unit for the, for the loop. Basically, it has it contains a bias T. It allows the 12 volts to be varied from here and send it out to the loop itself. With this knob, we vary that voltage, actually tunes the loop. Uh, it covers 160, 60 meters. I do have a, a relay, small relay in there. It's hooked up to the push to talk line on the radio. So when it goes into transmit, it shorts the antenna out. I also use a little preamp which helps it out. Basically, small, RG6 coax, five feet on a side. The shield is split at the top, and the center conductor comes down into the box there at the bottom, where it goes into a impedance transformer to drop the impedance down to 50 ohms. Next, let's go see Mel, N7GCO. Mel lives near Cheney. He has two low-band receive antennas. One is a horizontal traveling wave antenna. The other one is a three element vertical phased array. The traveling wave antenna, it's my favorite receive antenna. I use it for 160 and 80 meters. I'm gonna demonstrate the difference between the receive using a regular antenna and a receive antenna. I'm on an AM station. You can look on the screen and you can, you'll see that it's barely registered. Now I'm going to switch to a receive antenna. You notice immediately on the screen the signal went way up. The traveling wave antenna consists of two horizontal wires, 100 feet long and 2 feet apart, using PVC spreaders. It's hung at 20 feet between two trees. At the center of the top wire is a 1000 ohm resistor. At the center of the bottom wire is a 16 to 1 transformer. In the triangular way array, there are three vertical antennas that are exactly matched. They come down to a amplifier that sends them to the central unit. They have to be exactly the same. Each of the antennas has under it a series of radials. Now I'm going to show you using a high Z and rotate directions, and you'll watch the signal change as I change direction. You can clearly see that when you use a receive antenna, the clarity and the power of the signal comes through much greater, making it much easier to work at DX station. Finally, we'll go see Gary, AD7XG. He lives west of Davenport. He has an 800 foot long beverage antenna. And I'm walking the length of my beverage antenna. It's a well worth a while project to, uh, to do. It does take some land though, some real estate. 
Uh, my beverage is uh, 10 feet above the ground and it's high enough for, so deer don't uh, collide with it. Mine is over 800 feet, it's probably 850 feet. It um, works well on 160, um, it'll work on 80. You, you have a little bit of, of, of efficiency drop on 80. So uh, they're simple, but uh, they're quite large. Um, there's some complexities to it to make it uh, work efficiency. You should, you should read uh, the Beverage Antenna Handbook. I, I recommend that. Okay, here we are at the terminating end, where it terminates to ground through a resistance. I use the fuse holder, um, just in case lightning did take it out, um, and uh, not even a, a direct strike would do that. It could get damaged just from a nearby lightning strike. I have a little gas uh, protection in there for, uh, for, st for static and, and nearby hits, and uh, the, the, of course the carbon resistor. It has to be calculated using a uh, carbon potentiometer, and uh, you come up with the uh, value by tuning that. And so once you come up with that value, then you replace it with a carbon resistor. Okay, now we're at the uh, transformer end of it where the coax connects to the wire, and it's got a, a, a matching transformer, a nine to one. Mine is a commercial bought one, and it's totally sealed, which is good. I use uh, RG6U. Uh, This is my protection device, and uh, you need to use one. Um, it can be uh, bought from uh, DX Engineering easily. And it's a front end saver, and of course it does your switching so that the RF doesn't damage your uh, receiver. I hope those four examples have given you some ideas of what you might do for a receive-only antenna. Whether you live on a small city lot, five acres in the country, or 20 acres in the country.